Today, we're going to learn how to paint gold. Anybody want to schmook in a pancake? Hi guys, Jonathan from Two Raven Studios. Sorry for the awful gold member impersonation. So, last week we painted non-metallic metal gold on C-3PO. This week we're doing actual metallic gold on a Legio Custodes Achilles Dreadnought, as usual, Games Workshop models are a mouthful to say. So, this model is actually just totally armored in gold armor, so it's a perfect model to try this out on. This is the same technique that I used on my Queen of Malefica model, which you can check out if you want to. It's a more greenish gold, so there's a lot of different ways to do gold. You can do warm golds, colder golds. We're going to kind of do something in the greenish, tarnished gold look to it. So most of this work is going to be with the airbrush. So let's head over to the airbrush and get right into it. The model has been primed with Vallejo Black Surface Primer, and now we're using Vallejo Russian Green Primer in a zenithal angle. So when you're painting metallics, you really don't want a bright zenithal undercoat, but I still wanted some sort of zenithal undercoat, so I'm using this green to accomplish that. So we're painting it from that higher angle just to give it the undercoat of slight gradient and start our green feel right from the undercoat of it. Up next, we're using my favorite gold, Necro Gold from Scale 75. Again, I'm using this more of a zenithal way, so I'm not covering the entire model with it. I'm hitting it, as you can see, from a higher angle and leaving the deep recesses, either the black or the green color that we have as the primer. So you're just going to move around the miniature, coating the majority of it with this Necro Gold while leaving, like I said, the recesses, the primer color that we already added in. Next up, we're actually using a color shift paint from Green Stuff World. This is Mystic Gold. So color shift paints change color depending on the angle you're viewing them from. This one shifts from a gold to a greenish color, and it's going to help us with that greenish tint to the gold. It's also very vibrant gold, which helps us. So we're, again, doing this more from a high angle. So we want to leave the Necro Gold in the shadows and then the primer in the deepest shadows. So as we're building up these layers, we always want to leave some of the previous layers showing. The Necro Gold, the way these uh, Green Stuff World paints spray out of the airbrush, they are hard to be very precise with, but you just want to try to, again, use that higher angle so we still have the shadows darker as we put this on the miniature. So if you've watched any of my other miniature tutorials, you know when I paint something gold, I almost always highlight it with Peridot Alchemy from Scale 75, and this is no different. So I will be, again, using this at a higher angle and kind of highlighting the areas, leaving all of the other tones we already have on the miniature there. We don't want to undo the work we've already done. We just want to add more to it. And again, this is our highlight color that we're adding in onto the miniature. So just from that high angle, Move down. I should have mentioned in the beginning that I'm thinning this down with a mix of Viejo Airbrush Thinner and Flow Improver. I, this color and the Necro Gold were both thinned down with that. The Green Stuff Color World paint, I just put straight in through the airbrush without thinning. So again, this is thinned down with those two mediums. Next up, we have 
Orc Flesh Contrast Paint. And this is gonna be our first shade. So unlike the other paints where we're taking a high angle, we now wanna take a low angle. So we're adding green tones into the shadows with this. The contrast paints can be rather strong through the airbrush, so you want to have a delicate, you can kind of see the way my finger's just wiggling on the trigger there, delicate touch to add some green into the shadows. And next up, Shyish Purple Contrast Paint. This also is going to help deepen our shadows further. So now we are deepening the shadows with this contrast purple. A good way to make your golds really pop is to add purples into the deepest shadows. And this is a very dark purple that we're adding into this to make it, again, look old and worn. So Shyish Purple into the deep recesses. At this point, I feel like I overdid the shadows, so I'm going to bring some color back in. So again, I'm using the Mystic Gold from Green Stuff World just to add some mid-tones back in. So I don't want to delete the highlights or shadows I already did. I just want to brighten that mid-tone back up to this gold color. So that's what I'm doing here. So this is the miniature as it stands looks pretty good but we really want to pop up that contrast and you know what I'm gonna say I'm gonna use oil paints to do it between this step and the next you'll have noticed that I painted the metallic parts that are silver thrash metal by scale 75 and I painted the black parts black this is about painting the gold so I'm kind of glazing over all the other colors on this miniature but just know that's why it looks different the next step I painted those two things in so here we are with oil paints. It's a mix of sap green and ivory black thin down with mineral spirits. And if you are watching in the corner, you'll probably notice the ruins from my other painting tutorial. It's because this is the same exact mix that I used on those ruins. So again, it's a mix of sap green with some ivory black mixed in. And we're just putting it into all those little recesses. So you kind of notice I'll tap the paint and it will just flow in all those little cracks and crevices and really define the lines of the miniature, which is what we're trying to do here. We're trying to find kind of all the detail by lining it with this oil paint. So just move around the entire miniature, dabbing into the detail and the oil paint, if you have it thin properly, will just flow in there and give you a very nice result. So now that miniature really is starting to have that old gold look that I'm going for, but I want to pop out some highlights. I'm going to use Peridot Alchemy to do it. So just like through the airbrush when I use this as a highlight, this is going to be a highlight, but now we're going to use the brush and just catch all those edges. And if you are looking at this miniature, you'll see there is a ton of detail on this to use this as a panel line with. So we're just going along and highlighting all those raised areas. You can see a trick is that when you're trying to catch the edge, instead of trying to use the tip of the brush, which I'm doing right now because I'm using fine detail, if you're hitting the edge, like the edge of the knee, which I will be painting in a moment, you will see that I use the side of the brush to really catch that sharp edge. And it's just a little trick that'll help you 
give you nice fine lines on the edges of your miniature. When you're painting something like the top of this miniature, you want to pick a direction the light is coming from and highlight those edges. Not so much outline the entire thing because it will start to look cartoony if you outline the entire edge, but I'm picking kind of the angle from the miniature's right of the light source that way. I'm highlighting those edges and picking them out more than the ones away from that light source. So last step here, we're just going to use speed metal to add further highlights. We don't want to completely cover the Peridot Alchemy highlights we did in the previous step, but we want to really hit the very sharp edges and corners and pop out those highlights even more with this color. Whenever you're painting gold, you always want to use a silver color as your highest highlight because it really helps it pop out. Even though this is supposed to be a old worn gold, I still want those really sharp edges to pop and I'm going to use this color to do it and you might see as I go around I also use this color to highlight the silver metallic areas as well so I'm using the same color on the silver and the gold. So here's the final result. I know it's a lot of gold and honestly if I was painting this for my army I probably would add some different colors in here and there just to break up the surface but this was a tutorial on how to paint gold so I just decided the whole thing is going to be gold. As it rotates you can really kind of see the effect that the color shift paint gives it as it's moving which is very interesting and adds another layer to this tarnished gold look. I really enjoy this technique and the result it gives. So that was how I paint my greenish gold color. I hope you guys like that. If you want more and you're interested in different ways to paint gold, because like I said at the beginning, we could do a warm gold, a all kinds of different golds. So I have a Rogel door miniature from Forge World that I've had for way too long and has not been painted. So if you're interested in a warm gold, maybe we can paint that miniature up and show you guys how to do that. Well, if you found what I showed this time useful, please leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Next week we're going to have a video teaching you how to oil paint on miniatures because I do that a lot and I figured I should give something more specific about how oil paints work when you're working with miniatures. But until next time, keep on gaming and paint your minis.